Yes, good day, it's Charlie, um, 02CTM. Just want to um, spend this video just looking at um, the conversion of what was the direct conversion receiver uh, now into a superhead. So, over the last few videos, we've been sort of making up the various components or, or modules, more the point, um, to get this ready for a superhead. So, um, I think the best way there is just sort of start the um, at the front and just move the way through. So, what we have over the back is we have the antenna coming in. At this stage of the game, it's going going through uh, what will be the transmit receive um, relay swap over for the antenna. So, at the moment, um, this particular pole here is just switching the antenna between receive and what will ultimately be transmit. Uh, that's going through the black wire um, and into the uh, RF amplifier. That RF amplifier I want to rebuild. Um, that's just reusing an old one, um, but like I say, I want to double back around and rebuild that one. The output of that is going through our bandpass filter that we made a while back, um, with the uh, the switchable mod modules between uh, 80 and 40 meters. Now, back in there. Um, the output of that then bounces along into the uh, mixer. Um, and there it's getting, the other input is from our SI5351. So just recapping on that one, the SI5351 we're using clock 0 and clock 2. Clock 0 is our VFO, our variable frequency oscillator. And clock 2 is going to be our beat frequency oscillator. So through that black wire there, we're getting our local oscillator feed into our uh, homebrew double balance mixer there. Um, the output of that uh, DBM and just to, just to pause there, uh, I, I did the last video just using the scope um, with the highest setting there just to, to trim that out. Did exactly the same thing here, just looked at the output of this on the, the scope on the highest setting and then just trimmed that to, uh, to null that out. Anyway, the output of uh, that um, SI, so not SI5351, that DBM is going into, oh, apologies there, into uh, the first of two uh, Plessy um, bi-directional amplifiers. Um, those particular amplifiers uh, were designed for 50 ohms input and output. So on this side I don't have any, I can just get a bit of view there, I don't have any impedance matching. I'm just matching straight out of the, the DBM um, straight into the input of that, that um, particular amplifier. The output however, there is a, a um, impedance matching transformer and that's matching our 50 ohms through to the 200 ohms for the two crystal filters. So that there's a standard uh, 12 turn uh, to 5 turns. So 5 turns on the Plessy side, or the, ampl the IF amplifier side, and then 12 turns on um, the side for the crystals. Uh, the two wires over the back there, uh, VCC coming in on the red, and then the brown wire there is the, uh, the switch voltage. So that's either earth or 6 volts. Um, to, to make that amplifier change between uh, transmit and receive or just change directions uh, more to the point. Um, I did have a look at converting those the, that amplifier to 13.8 volts um, but couldn't um, and the problem there is the max reverse emitter base voltage for those two devices, the 3904 and the 3906, is only 6 volts. Um, hence the reason why VCC is running on 6 volts here. If I'd up that to 12, then I would have uh, exceeded that uh, max rating for those two um, particular devices. So uh, just left that amplifier there um, stock uh, as per um, Plessy's original design. Um, as we just mentioned, let me just move that VFO out there. Uh, the output of uh, that IF amplifier is going through a relay here, and that's just switching between the SSB and the CW filter. Um, and then the output of that crystal filter is through another relay which is again switching um, what will be the second IF amp uh, between the output of the SSB and the CW filter. Both of those two relays there are being switched by just over the back there a 2N222A or four twos and an A um, and that's getting its drive from the, the brown wire there. That brown wire there is hanging off uh, digital pin number 10 uh, on here. So when we flick the mode switch between 
um, CW and LSB and you can hear the ticking there that's those two relays um, swapping over between the two amps that's say again between the two uh, crystal filters right so um, and just for interest sake the that's a 1k ohm resistor uh, on the base so the emitter is tied directly to ground the collector is going to the two relays um, and the other side of the coil is hot on 12.8 uh, volts or 13.8 um, and like I say a 1k ohm resistor uh, just to um, reduce that base current into that device there uh, the output of that switching relay is into the second IF amp um, exactly the same as the first one um, yeah nothing else to say there exactly the same no changes um, except well in fact there is actually one change uh, in this particular case now there is impedance matching for the input so the input is now matching 50 ohms through to our 200 ohms which was the design for the two crystal filters again 12 turns on the crystal side and six turns on the amplifier side the output of the amplifier there uh, is that yellow wire running into the RF input for the second um, DBM which is uh, acting as a, uh, a balanced demodulator. So the second uh, input there is the, the VFO input um, and as we mentioned before that's coming from uh, clock 2 of the SI5351. Uh, so, um, so we've got our IF coming in, we've got our local oscillator coming in here which is the BFO frequency and then the output is audio and that audio then is going across to our audio amplifier uh, which we made up um, some time ago. Um, I'll talk about the crystal filters in a sec. So the software at the moment has been subtly updated. So now um, we've got uh, the, the two bands up and running. So that's the obviously the 80 meter band. So we can stop there on, so let's go nice and easy number, 737. Uh, and now if we swap across to um, 40 meters, we can change that frequency. Now the old frequency is remembered, so if we were to go back, there goes our 737 again, and then back to 40, and it's remembered that frequency. So we can swap at hearts, content backwards and forwards, and also enabled now is um, you can't exceed the, the extremities of those two bands. So 73 down to 71, and then for 80 meters, 3.5, maximum of 9. Um, right, so... Uh, the only other thing which had to be done apart from wiring it all up and, and uh, getting the, uh, the, the the hardware configuration for the uh, radio was to set the two frequencies um, for the VFO and for the um, BFO, so Victor and Bravo for the two oscillators there. So um, if we just talk about CW for a start, um, let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. Uh, I haven't fully now analyzed this yet, so at the moment I'm just trying um, low side injection. So we've got our, 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 our SSB, so the, uh, the one over the back there, the SSB filter sitting here with a center frequency of uh, 8.998 uh, megahertz. And here we've got our 40 meter band, notionally 7 megahertz, and our 80 meter band, notionally 3.5 megahertz. So with the low side injection, um, I'm aiming, and like I say, I need to analyze this for birdies and that, um, as well as any other um, potential uh, out of band signals being mixed into the pass band. But suffice to say for now, looking at keeping the VFO down there on the low side, in other words, the VFO frequency plus our incoming frequency is mixed, and we take the sum, pass that through our IF um, to get up here to our our, um, our crystal filter center frequency. So what I've done for the, um, starting off with the beat frequency oscillator, so a couple of things here. So both 80 meters and 40 meters transmit lower sideband. So the intelligence is sitting on the low side or the low, um, the lower sideband of the carrier, suppressed obviously. So by low side injection, I'm now transposing that intelligence up to have that intelligence there inside the pass band of our bandpass filter. So what I've done there, I've taken our notional center frequency, 
and I sort of do a little bit backwards here, but what, what I'm trying to do is I, I, I want to recover, and, it, and I apologize for going this backwards, but I'll do it this way anyway. I want to recover the intelligence that's sitting inside here. Um, now that intelligence is sitting somewhere in the realm of 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz for, for voice. So 300 hertz down, and then extending for another 2.7. So 2.7 um, kilohertz plus 300 hertz gives us our 3 kilohertz. So um, that's what I've tried to represent down here. The BFO frequency is sitting, starting there, plus 2700 divided by 2, which is half that bandwidth. So there, plus that, plus an additional 300. That's what I started with to be the, the BFO frequency. So once I'd established that, um, I then said, well, okay, having now got the BFO frequency, um, the VFO sitting down here, in order to transpose this correctly, needs to be um, our beat frequency oscillator minus the frequency, or our desired frequency, plus X. Um, didn't start off with X, just had that for a start. And then, as I'll just demonstrate in a sec, by um, using a test signal, I adjusted uh, a fiddle factor, or X, to, to give me the, um, the cleanest output. Um, so that was the process I did for, um, for setting both the beat frequency and the variable frequency oscillator for the single sideband, uh, and that's now being coded in. Uh, and I'll drop the code up on the blog uh, later on. So for the CW filter, um, a similar approach, but a little bit different. So the center frequency for that um, tight CW bandpass filter is 899.6750. So what I elected to do, again, sort of starting off with the, the BFO, I want to produce, okay, assumption. My assumption is the, for example, this one here, the incoming signal is a discrete signal, for example, 3.5 megahertz, and I want to output out of the radio a 700 hertz tone when I'm tuned to that frequency. In other words, Somewhere out there in the ether is a 3.5 megahertz signal. I've tuned the radio to read 3.5 megahertz. I want the radio to output a 700 hertz tone. So in other words, I need to, once it's sitting here in the middle of that pass band, I want to have the beat frequency oscillator um, offset by 700 hertz. So when it goes through that balanced demodulator, the beat frequency between the two will be the 700 hertz, which is then passed through to the audio amplifier. Um, so that's what I got here. The beat frequency oscillator is the center frequency plus 700. And then the, the VFO on receive, don't worry about this transmit here, that's going to be coming out of clock one eventually, um, is that frequency there uh, minus our frequency of operation. Uh, and again, that's been coded into, into the... Uh, into the um, Arduino there, so when we flick between the two modes, um, the changes in those settings for the output of the, I, the SI 5351 is automatically updated. Um, and again, uh, I won't go through the code right now, but if, if there's a desire to do so, then I'll certainly put up one uh, looking at that. So in terms of uh, testing it, so once I'd sort of set the um, set the starting values for the BFO and VFO, um, I just used a, a simple um, uh, podcast here playing into the, into the test transmitter uh, on a really low power setting there, so uh, transmitting next to nothing into a dummy load and then just having a, a short fly lead uh, running across so that that little uh, yellow wire there is just sitting on top of the dummy load uh, into the antenna input. Yeah, so, uh, so and that's exactly what we got there. So, so that was, so like I said, let me just turn the volume down a bit. We're on, um, and of course, and, and if we try and squeeze that through the CW filter, we're not going to have much joy with that. So 
um, that's what I did. So uh, having set those raw um, figures for the VFO and the beat, and the beat frequency oscillator um, with a known good transmission, um, I then, like I say, tweet that X factor to make the output sound what the original sounded like. Um, for the uh, CW, just took the output of uh, the SIG gen here, so if we were to go down to say 3.7, in fact we'll just step that off, but let's go 3.75. So 3.75, um, and again if we were to come back across to the main radio, and we were to, uh, now right, at the moment we're on lower sideband mode, so we have the main uh, SSB filter there. So we can only just hear it there, but if we were to step off by um, by 700 hertz, we then get the tone coming through. But of course we want to use ideally uh, the CW filter, so by uh, moving into CW mode, we then engage um, the CW filter, and we offset that second BFO. Oh, sorry, the fan's just turning on for that um, house supply, I can turn that off. Um, it offsets it by 700 hertz, which means we now get the 700 hertz tone coming out for our desired selected frequency of, in this particular case, 7375, which matches the output of the SIGGEN. Um, I'm not a, you know, I've said this many, 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 many times that I am no expert in this whole field of uh, making radios and setting up radios. Um, if this method is flawed, can someone let me know, um, and I'll try something different. Um, I thought that was the most logical way. Now when I come to transmit, um, when I key the, or when I key the uh, Morse key, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the output of clock 1, and clock 1 will transmit, or the frequency of that transmission will be our desired frequency. So then my assumption then is I'm now sending back to the recipient, or my transmission, will be exactly the same as the frequency coming in. So the theory goes. Um, that's a little bit different from this radio here. So this radio, if you go into CW mode, if you wanted to, let me just turn that carrier down, uh, if you wanted to tune to somebody transmitting on 3.7 megahertz, you'd actually have to step it down to, so again, what am I doing? Uh, stepping it down uh, 700 hertz to get that nice 700 hertz tone coming through and when you key it then keys it at 3.7 um, so what I've tried to do in my code is to get around that need to offset it and have it all done automatically so then what you see on the screen you don't have to do any kind of offsetting no mental gymnastics it is what it is um, but like I say, if that's an inappropriate way of doing it, I'm more than happy to uh, take some feedback and some suggestions on, on a better way of doing it. So I'm going to pause there, and um, what I'll do, and I'm going to just wait until the sun goes down later on, um, and uh, just do some comparisons between this radio here and the commercial rig, um, and just see how it performs. Um, at this stage, I haven't done any kind of characteristic testings in terms of um, minimum discernible signal that it can pick up or, or anything like that but um, suffice to say uh, from you know the, 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 the gradual bench testing or the, the little bench testing so far certainly again those homebrew DBMs no, say again those homebrew double balance modulators or mixers I should say getting a bit tongue tied there uh, seem to perform really well, uh, really good actually, so it certainly pays to take the time to to match those diodes there. Um, that certainly makes for a nice balanced um, nice balanced mixer, so um, that seems to be working well. Uh, from what I can gather so far, that crystal filter, the SSB one, seems to be quite good. Um, it'll be interesting to see when we go to transmit, um, how well it performs, but at the moment, certainly on reception, with the test frequency coming in, it seems to do well. Uh, the CW filter seems to be quite tight, in line with uh, the, 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 the design and the, and the post-design testing. 
Um, as expected, its insertion loss is, is a little bit higher than the SSB filter. Um, but, you know, so lovey. Um, and we'll just see how that performs in practice. And uh, if we have to need, or if I need to boost up its output to offset any losses in there, then I'll worry about that at the time. But at the moment, um, it is what it is. I mentioned the other day that, uh, well, I just mentioned before that those Plessy filters, say again, those Plessy amplifiers, uh, need to have 6 volts so there's just a little voltage regulator over the back so that's um, an LM317 uh, with a variable feedback resistor to its, to its adjustment pin um, allowing that to, to uh, drop that 13.8 down to 6 volts uh, for those two amplifiers um, and that uh, read over there eventually will switch uh, between ground and 6 volts to basically command uh, which way those two amplifiers go, either that direction or that direction. Um, and of course that'll be commanded by uh, our PTT switch in due course. Rightio, well I'm going to leave it there. Um, I don't think there's anything else to talk about software-wise. Um, suffice to say that that's all working well. Um, and uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? I think that's all. Right. So I'm just going to pause there and we'll come back later on, hopefully when it's dark. Um, 80 metres has been pretty noisy and um, so is 40 in the last couple of days. Uh, if the signal's no good then I'll just um, put this video up and we'll get some comments coming back in. Okay, cheers all. Just got the uh, commercial rig there on 3670. Let me just change the antenna across. Yeah, of course, this, um, let me turn that down, this speaker here is not mounted in any kind of case, so it doesn't get the sort of the, uh, the low frequency, frequencies coming through so much, but sensitivity-wise, they seem to be very comparable with the commercial rig. Let's go back again. Back again, just change the antenna switch across. We'll just, we'll just peek it. And that RF amplifier is turned quite a bit down. That's, that's way up, which is a bit too noisy. So back again, the other one. Oh, let's see if there's any CW going on. Like I say, quite noisy. It's an Australian station. Oh, a bit of morse going on there. It's got the CW um, filter. a lot better without the, all the, the noise from the uh, atmospheric noise cut down with the bandwidth. Just that much narrower bandwidth. It's easily copyable. Uh, copyable. So that CW footer seems to be working quite well. Let's see what else is back on um, SSB.
My friend just saying that noise is all atmospheric if I pull the antenna connection off. Gone. So volume, that's volume four ball there. So that's just so, so noisy. We'll put that antenna back on again. Lots of, lots of atmospheric noise there. In digital mode. So thirty six seventy. Thirty six seventy. So the two rigs do certainly, certainly sound different, but um, I put a lot of that down to the fact that this is an open speaker, it's not enclosed, um, which certainly doesn't help. But um, you know, sensitivity wise, it's, it's not too far off. Anyway, I won't um, I won't labour this too much. I'll keep looking around. If there's anything else of interest, I'll uh, I'll take it on. It's an Australian station on 40 metres. Got the 40 metre band pass filter in. Forty's quite noisy, not a static. Let's keep tuning around. No, I'll we'll keep looking around. Maybe we'll seem to find some CW. <clears throat> okay, Got another CW freak, not CW here. It's really noisy on 80, but uh, that much narrower bandwidth certainly pays off on the CW filter. Just cuts that noise down. See if he comes back up. There he is. It's way down the weeds. So it's so much easier to hear with that noise cut down with the, uh, the CW filter. Okay. I'll, um, I'll keep looking and we'll keep looking. Okay, get looking. There's a uh, 40 meter station. Way down the weeds. Let me just go back to the other rig. Pretty similar, you can just hear him in the background as well. So back up the commercial rig, just change the antenna across. Turn the volume up. Yeah, 
and turn it back across. He's there, just. Let's keep looking around. Pretty noisy. Very, very noisy. No CWs I can hear here. Yeah. Go back to commercial rig. Some of the digital modes. One forty five. We say one forty five. Go back up top. He's gone. There he is. No, it's gone again. There he is. I might have to put this in the um, in the enclosure. But let's be fair, you know, <laughs> it's a pretty simple rig. Uh, one antenna amplifier over here, uh, a couple of single stage, um, in terms of transistors, single stage uh, amplification for the first IF and the second IF. So, really, honestly, I can't expect too much. But for what it does, it's pretty good. Um, quite happy with that actually. Okay, I'm going to um, say 73s here, um, keep potting around, conditions are, are pretty poor, but uh, I think that's probably enough for now. So uh, all in all, we're yeah, pretty happy with, with how it's turning out. Um, like I say, I do want to, oops, sorry, I do want to revisit um, doing the uh, RF amplifier. I reckon there's some, um, some changes there to be made based on that previous video in terms of designing up that amplifier so I wouldn't mind doing some more on that. Uh, in terms of the the Plessy amplifiers um, I'm not going to do any more on those so I think I'll start to now just turn my attention to thinking about the PTT circuit and um, turning this into a transmitter um, and like I say the, the initial thinking is certainly for CW is to take clock one um, out, uh, filter that, turn that into a nice sine wave and then feed that into uh, an amplifier chain and out as a, um, as a discrete frequency um, as opposed to um, using a, an older technique of, of feeding it back through the, the IF chain um, I don't think I'll do that, as an, as an audio frequency that is so I think I might do it that way uh, voice of course will just feed straight in so voice will come in onto that, um, the, uh, the output of that product detector will feed audio into there um, and then run the whole thing backwards and we'll produce out the back end of that mixer um, our desired frequency and what we'll probably do is feed it back through that bandpass filter before going through the power amplifier chain just to um, get rid of any harmonics on that so I think that'll be the thinking for converting this uh, into a um, into a transmitter, but anyway, as a superhead, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's a it's a very simple radio, but it's a it's a very achievable radio. And like I say, the, the whole idea of these videos is is not to say this is how it's done. That's certainly not the case at all. But more, this is a way. Um, and at the end of the day, the you know the proofs in the pudding, and I'm getting uh, audio coming out from an RF signal, so that's great. Um, it's inhaling RF, it's putting out audio, so 
um, in terms of radios, you know, that's that's great. That's what it's all about. Um, so like I say, this is not the way of doing it. It is a way and um, just really encourage others to give it a go. Um, it's not that hard and as you can see, you can do all of this really with um, very minimal equipment. Um, you know, good soldering iron, oscilloscope, a SIG gen is, is certainly of hand. Um, and it's just, you know, a multitude of, of, of cheap components these days to, to put this stuff together. So, um, and, and like I say, and I've said it many times, uh, I do err on the side of simplicity. Uh, and th there's a reason for that. And again, it's all part of that encouragement to, um, to get others to give it a go. Um, I, I don't want to go for multiple complex stages, which just becomes, it just looks and feels too hard. I, I want to keep it simple to, like I say, uh, provide that encouragement. So I, I have rambled way too long, so I'm going to knock it on the head here and um, say 73s, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.